This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its seventh year. Talk like you've never heard it before. It's the Ramble in White, and we're here until midnight. I'm a poet, and I don't even know it. Ladies and gentlemen, there he is. Huh? 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 It's Albert. It's Albert <laughs> Reynoso. Big best, deal. Best producer I ever had. Big deal. Big deal? You know, a, producers don't get any credit. It's all the talent. Talent, talent, talent. Uh, let me see here. I just want to move something here. so that I, I'm. There we go. See, everybody will say, why did that just move? But what I do is I like to put the, uh, uh, the interview, when I'm doing these interviews, over in a certain place on the screen. So when I'm looking at it, it looks like I'm looking at you. If I oh. had it on the other side, and I forgot to move it, and that's why everybody saw stuff move and so Do you want on. me to sit like this? Yeah, well. Or like this? <laughs> what would be better? No, no, you're fine. You're fine. Okay. So how you doing? I'm doing well. You've been living I guess. in Living the big life in Florida. Yes. Yeah. Retired. Re- reti- How old are you now? 58. And you're retired. I've been for eight years. You know what's funny about it today? I mean, we don't think of retirement being that early. Okay? But today it is. Oh, hey, there's Uh-oh. the wife. There's my wife. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, I mean, it, it's just that people are being forced to retire earlier than they have in the past. For older people, yes. We're, we're kind of forced out of, out of jobs because they want the younger people to take those jobs for less money and no benefits. Exactly. And they will be working a lot longer because they have nothing that they've saved. Because they're not going to make as much, and they're not going to get the benefits, and it's going to be it's going to be tragic for it, the young generations. It, it, yeah, it is. Whatever millennials or Z or X, I don't know what they are. But, but I mean, do you feel that your age uh, is going against you? I mean, in other words, if you go for a job and they find out you're what fifty eight, that they that uh, that affects them, and, oh, and that isn't that old. So, no, it's not that old. But still, they they know that people that are in that age range are looking for a job that's going to uh, pay substantial money Mm -hmm. and get benefits. And a lot of jobs don't do that anymore. A lot of big companies don't do that anymore. And, and, and they, they figure that younger, that older people want a substantial amount of money. Well, yeah, because we've been used to it. We've been used to uh, being taken care of by the companies we worked up for, for, for many years. Yeah. And, um, and that's changed drastically. And, and not only the money, but the benefits. The benefits are very important. Why do we keep talking? Why have we talked about health care for, for 30 years in this country and nothing's been done? Because we don't get proper health care. The only way to get health care is to get health care through your company in many cases. And that's just not happening anymore. Or, or to get health care. Uh, by being so poor that well, that's the, you can do, take a dole from the state, and then you're getting the worst health care possible. And that, and well, uh, but at least you're getting health care. Yeah, yeah. You know, there, there's nothing wrong with 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 government health care. At least you're getting health care. So you have to wait to see a doctor. Heck, you got to wait for for a doctor now if if you have good health care. So what's the difference? Well, I often mm-hmm. wonder what what companies. Why they felt, oh, well, we want to, we want to resist the, enough health care for our people and so on. Do, I mean, do you remember in the old days when you got health care at a company, that was one of the perks they offered you, saying that's why you should come to work for us. You get health care. And, no, and- no, I was never told that. I was just told, hey, we're going to give you health care and a 401k. And it wasn't a perk. It was something you got. Yeah. And by the way, if you remember care- closely, you never had to pay for that. They paid for it. I, well, in, in, in many cases, they paid a good deal of it, but you had to yeah. pay something. Well, no. In, um, when I started oh, out yes. back in yes. the Revolutionary War. Right. Yes, uh, you're right about that. Uh, no. In, in, back in those days, they just gave you the health care. That was it. 
But you know why? Of course, I didn't didn't need it back then. Right. But you didn't have to they didn't have to jump through hoops with the insurance companies and the government regulation and and the the doctor's insurance and all this stuff. Now they got to pay up the yin yang to uh, to 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 get health care for their for their uh, employees. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, it, it, it but it, but it, 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 for instance, you and I, we had a health care plan at uh, Sirius. How right. much did you pay every, every month for that? Somewhere yes. around 300 bucks, right? Right. What was that? <laughs> you know, I mean, th- that should be something that they give you and that's it. Some companies do still to this day. They pay the whole thing. Yeah. But, but it's rare, but, very but it's rare. rare. But it's very rare. And and so we wonder why we have such an unhealthy country. We have a we want you know we didn't. If any country should have been able to handle the COVID crisis, it should have been us, and we handled it miserably, just miserably. Well, there are reasons for that. Well, <laughs> yes, I hear a cat. By the way, reason, yeah, that's that's my uh, that's my buddy Bean who's yeah. been with me for eighteen years. Just before I met you. Yeah, I got him, and he's uh, he's on his on his on his uh, last legs now. He's and he, you know he's doing a thing where he hides mm-hmm. because he's he's literally he's dying in front of us, but wow. he's still walking around and eating. But he makes noise now. So. That's no fun. Yeah, but he still purrs, so I know he's happy. Yeah, yeah, as long as he's happy. Yeah. I, I I had a guy once I knew. His name was uh, Ken Minyard. He wound up working in L.A. We were working in Minneapolis together, and he and his wife invited me over to dinner, and we, and my wife and I, over to dinner, and we went over to dinner at their house. And as I'm sitting there eating dinner, I look down at the floor, and there is this—I don't know what it was. It it looked like it could have been a dog, but it was like bumping into things and going, <laughs> making funny sounds and so on. And I said, "What's that?" And he said, "Oh, that's our that's our dog." I can't remember what the dog's name was. Uh-huh. And I said, well, "What what's wrong with him?" He says, "Well, first he uh, got bad breath, and then we had to remove all his teeth." <laughs> yeah, yeah, I did that with my cat. And and then he he went uh, lame in one paw, mm-hmm. and then he went lame in the other paw, and then. Uh, we had to, uh, uh, what was it, what else? What, oh, then he went blind. Oh, mine's deaf now. Yeah. And he said he can't, couldn't, uh, he couldn't, he couldn't exactly bark. <laughs> so that's why you hear that snarf, snarf. Yeah. I said, why didn't you put him away? No. And he looked at me and went, he's, ha- he's happy. Yeah. Nothing <laughs> wrong with him. He doesn't looking, know that he's feeling bad. Look at this dog. It's barely an animal anymore. Yeah. You know? So, but, uh, uh, it, you know, I mean, I just feel that, that we have been so, I mean, remiss in just everything. I mean, do you realize 525,000 people have died as a result of this country not giving a shit? And I don't care. We can blame it on Trump. Go ahead. But still, it was the, it was the, the, the um, country not giving a shit. Well, I think that's a broad statement, and and it's it's somewhat unfair to say the country doesn't give a shit because uh, look at the people who are working tirelessly in the hospitals. Yeah, they give a shit. Yeah, look at the pe- I have I have a, a, a wife and a son here who work in uh, supermarkets, and they both are there every day, mm-hmm. regardless of people not wearing their masks or wearing their masks or do you know doing whatever kind of. Uh, unsafe practices so they give it they give a shit because they're going in there to help mm-hmm. people get mm-hmm. their groceries which yeah. is something you yeah. need um but i but i would for the most part say you're right if you say the go- the federal government does not give a shit and m- in many cases the state governments don't give a shit specifically this state that i live in yeah yeah well i mean it it, it uh, uh i just feel that we let this whole thing down we didn't have to have that many people die we didn't have to have the problem that we had but we just never listened to the science, you know, or a particular right. person didn't listen to the science and completely denied that the problem existed at all. You know, and what are you going to do? I mean, it, 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 it doesn't exist at all. People are dying like crazy and it doesn't exist at all. I mean, what kind of country are we? Well, we're going to do what we did. We had an election. 
And we said, this guy is not effective for what, what we need done mm-hmm. in, in this time. Yeah. Uh, in the, the, uh, the time of a pandemic, the likes of which nobody in this lifetime has seen. And uh, we said, that's enough. By a, by a you but, know, not a huge but, margin. But, but, but you go down to Texas and you got a governor down there who's opened everything up. No, and then no mask mandate, you know, the whole thing. And you go, what's this guy thinking? What's what's going through his mind? It doesn't exist. Are you kidding me? You know, that's, I, that's what I said. It's not it's not the country doesn't give a shit. It's the government doesn't give a shit. The federal government or didn't give a shit. And, mm-hmm. and in many cases, still the state governments. And, and it's it's a terrible thing. Well, I'll tell you, why I'll, would you not? Why would you not uh, be sa- rather safe I'll and tell sorry, you, which I'll is tell you, where we are now. I'll We're tell you in what sorry. pisses me off about this country. OK, um, for instance, they they tried to just pass a fifteen dollar an hour minimum wage. And they can't even get that done. Now, you tell me who can live on seven dollars an hour. Who can in, live on fifteen? And then I was going to say that who can live on 15? It should be somewhere around 25 because people are actually going to work. They're doing something. Mm-hmm. Okay. They're owed a certain decent quality of life for doing that. And yet we can't, we can't even give that to them. The Republicans go, Oh no, you yeah. know, that'll make people just kind of lie back and not work hard. What? Where's your, where's your mind here? I mean, I just don't, I I just find this country incredibly cruel to the working man. I agree. But they did have some union legislation or union talks yesterday, which, which, uh, which were positive. I didn't read the whole thing about it. What was that? I'm pretty much an ignorant individual at this point in my life. No, 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 no. But what was the, what was the thing about uh, the unions? Something, some, I just read it briefly. It was a bipartisan um, uh, note or letter um, about strengthening unions in some way. But I, I didn't get a chance to read the whole thing. Well, you know, everybody likes to put down unions and fight unions and so on. But I got to tell you, the unions are what gave you at least a minimum wage. Mm-hmm. We didn't even have a minimum wage at a certain point, you know. And people go, well, I don't want to have to join the union. The union gave you a lot of things even if you were never a member of the union mm-hmm. because it lifted the bar. You know, right. it, it made it made it, uh, uh, you know, so I, I, I don't get it. You know, I, 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 I I'm, I'm and then then I would the latest thing that I've gone crazy over is this whole Pepe Le Pew thing. Have you heard about this? Pepe Le Pew? The Warner Brothers has excised Pepe Le Pew from their library. Why? Because he molested the cat? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was it, it perpetuated it perpetuated a rape culture. Mm. Okay, wasn't he one of your favorite characters? Yeah, I love Pepe Le Pew. <laughs> Who didn't love Pepe Le Pew? He was a sweet little skunk who loved everybody. He was wanted, a lover. He was a lover. Yeah, that's all he was. His only mistake was um, he was he was too passionate. Yes. As I guess the French are, I don't really know the French that well, but I'm assuming from the cartoon alone. And uh, he picked the wrong the wrong species. He didn't know that the cat was not a skunk. Yes. Big mistake. Yeah. And it was that stripe down his back that he got from walking under a painted ladder or something. Right. You know? Right. And and it was it was funny. It was it was I didn't ever think of it as rape. You well, know, now it is. And we also thought of him as kind of stupid because he couldn't see the fact this was a cat. Yeah, you know, he was a, he was into bestiality. I think. But, and I well, I, 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 I think I brought, he knew it was a cat. I brought up the thing that uh, the, this one cartoon of his that where he falls in love with a black panther, and Ooh, every Pepe time, Le Pew? yeah, every time he goes to romance the black panther, it tears him to shreds. Oh, I don't remember that it, one. Yeah, yeah. And uh, just blah, and then Pepper the Pew's like all cut up and everything. But he still had to have And it. finally at the end, there's another last scene where he does it again and he gets torn up for the last time. And uh, he, he goes, you know, I think I'm beginning to like this. <laughs> <laughs> you know, come on, that's funny. He's into S&M and bestiality. Yeah, but I mean... And then the Dr. Seuss stuff with the family taking out uh, off several books of Dr. Seuss. 
you know, it's just, I, I'm tired of it. I'm so exhausted from all this stuff. And the, yeah. the, what I hate most is the term cancel culture. That's being used too much. I don't you even know. know what it means anymore. I don't know what it means anymore. They're using it for things it doesn't even mean any longer, you know? Uh, but I mean, I, ju I just am uh, amazed at, at all the things that are going on, and I just go, you know, I'm 81 years old. I don't have that many more years to live. Please let me live them in peace. Let me live <laughs> them with Pepe Le Pew, please, you know? Don't you want to see the whole world collapse? It's coming. It's coming. I, you may make it. I may make it. I may <laughs> watch it happen, you know? And I, I go, geez almighty, you know? I mean, it's just, uh, and I also think the thing that really bothers me is the, the, with the COVID is that I haven't been able to travel, you know, and at this time mm -hmm. in my life, my wife and I would like to do some traveling. Sure. We'd like to go some places and we can't, we're stuck here even with our two shots now. Yeah. By the way, if you lived in New York, uh, they just lowered the age to 60. So. Does me no good. Well, don't worry. You'll be getting yours within a couple of months. You know? Either way, I've been exposed, so I'm not really that concerned. Well, you know, you can get it again. It, it's, yeah, not, okay. it's not a... Uh, uh, I don't think that there's a, an immunity you get from having it or, or being exposed to it, you know? But then again, you're of an age where you're probably healthy enough that you're not going to see any dire consequences from the whole thing. As I say, it doesn't really matter to me because if it gets me mm -hmm. and I die, I won't know. So, so let me ask matter. you. Let me ask you. Do you miss radio? Um, not so much because I don't really consume it anymore. It's not. It's it's not the thing to go to anymore. Mm -hmm. When I get into the car, I don't turn the radio on. I put my Bluetooth on and go through my phone and, and get whatever I need, whatever I need. Yeah. yeah. Not just not just local stations, which are terrible down here. Do you think radio's deluding itself into believing it still exists? To some extent, yes. Because I always likened it to a, a snake where you cut off the head and because the rest of the body is still moving, it thinks it's alive. That could be. That yeah. could be. Yeah. No, I don't. I don't. Uh, I don't consume radio like that. And even, you know, you know, I think, um, I think that uh, that even Sirius is making good moves in in changing uh, their strategies a little bit and acquiring Pandora. I think that was a great move for them, and I think that that is the future of this medium. This audio medium is uh, is streaming audio and uh, and what's called podcasts now. Yeah, but, but I there's no need. Yeah. There's no need for anything else. You want to know what the problem is with podcasting, though? I mean, I, 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 I find I'm getting less of an audience lately because there's just so much of it out there. That's the problem. There's yeah. so much of it out there that for anybody to make noise, they've got to do something extraordinary to get that noise. they got to be, they got to be associated with somebody like CBS who then goes on their various platforms and advertises the podcast, you know? Well, that, that, will, that will happen. That will happen. And I think, I think maybe big radio company, well, how many big radio companies are there? There's just one really, iHeartRadio. Um, I think they, they're starting to uh, grasp that and starting to embrace uh, podcasting in a big way, more so even than their local stations. I hear people on, uh, on, lo on the local stations down here that I worked with in New York. This is, this is how bad the, uh, the radio thing is. Yeah. Um, and and it, it, it doesn't, it doesn't need to exist really anymore like that. You can get music anywhere you want. Most of us have it in our phone. And if you want to listen to something good, then there are pod podcasts that are exceptional to listen to. Yeah. Absolutely exceptional. Yeah. And, th and those will rise to the top. Well, sometimes. I mean, it depends on if they get the publicity and they have the promotion and they have the money for the promotion and so on and so forth. But there are so many podcasts. I What did I see? Something like, I don't know, 20 million podcasts out there? Some some incredible amount. And I'm going, geez, yeah, I remember when I was the only guy doing a podcast. But the, but you have you have different ways to access that and, and to be told about it. The, the, the whole thing when you when you go onto a um, onto a media site, this whole thing where you get the, the strip on the bottom or the strip on the side that says recommended for you. I think that's great. I think that's a really good feature, which nobody 
had in radio. What did we have in radio? Alex Bennett would be talking about the guy that's on after him Mm -hmm. or the guy that's on in the morning, the next morning or whatever it is. And that was the only real cross promotion or recommendation you got. And I think, I think that will change the way things happen. And, and, and the, the bad ones will suffer in the end. I, I, oh, I, I, I like, like uh, Gabnet. Uh, <laughs> Gabnet is what exactly? <laughs> yeah, right. What is it exactly? I'm beginning to forget. Hey, I think there's a guy in the, in the, in the building behind you who's going to jump. I'm getting so frustrated with it. I'm thinking about stopping it. I mean, I'm th- that frustrated. Where, where, how do I get an audience? How do I, how do I uh, go I out told there? You, I told you this many times. You give them too much. Don't give them that much. Give them once a week. Once a week. Yeah. 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 Give them once a week, two hours maybe. One hour is, is, is fine. How long is a podcast? Usually it's once a week, 30 minutes. Yeah. People don't consume, don't consume entertainment the you same could be way right. they did. I maybe should do it shorter or not as much. You know, maybe maybe once a week on Friday nights. Yeah. You know, that may be the way to go. You know, I mean, who knows if anybody will even listen then. Maybe I'll still get the same amount of listeners. Who knows? No, I think you'll get more listeners. I think you'll get more listeners because they can they have the week to to uh, to to take in that right. podcast. Right. Um, and, and, and they don't have to listen to it well, live, little, that, but they can. That little Monday thing we do at 4 o'clock gets more listeners than any single thing we do. Well, it's convenient. You know. That's that's the that's the great thing about that. Yeah. Well, maybe you should just do that. Well, you see, if I did that, I would probably just do it once a week. Because right. if I did it four or five times a week, everybody would be spoiled. You know. That's that's what Take I'm it telling for you. granted. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm coming to you for advice now, see. You're, <laughs> You're, you're, you're coming to the wrong that. guy. Yeah. This is not the guy for advice. So uh, what's your daily life like? Uh, we're doing this at 1130 in the morning. What are you going to do for the rest of the day? Like it's nighttime where I am and it's daytime where you are. Yeah, see? I see that. Yeah. Um, what's well, you know, I, I get up at uh, 1030, 11 o'clock, you know, um, uh, I go to sleep at uh, 930 with my wife. We like two old people with books in our hands. Yeah. Yeah. Um, occasionally the TV is on and the rest of the time it, it's filled with, uh, looking things up, watching things, reading. Yeah. That's it. Well, here's an average evening with my wife and I, although I start do the show at 10 30, but before we go to bed, uh, this is the average uh, night in, in lying in bed, watching TV. Did you fart? <laughs> Well, it's not. We don't have that problem because ours are very explosive and and, uh, and, and, hear, and obvious and obvious. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, As they call in the fireworks business, it's with report. Yeah. Well, what I like about her farting is she kind of she farts and then I smell it and then I go, "Did you fart?" And she goes, "Yeah, I guess I did." And then she gets the spray and sprays, and I'm thinking, did she really think she was going to get away with it? She never does. You know. This was why it was necessary for me to come on the show today? To talk about farting, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And when there's much more important stuff, much more important stuff that we, you know, that's going on in the world that we haven't even touched on yet. The whole Piers Morgan thing. Uh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I can't believe that, that, that I have to hear that name again in my lifetime. <laughs> Who well, cares? I, when he walked off, I'm sitting there and, and yelling at the screen. Yeah, go back to CNN. Who yeah. cares? Yeah. Who cares? Yeah. Walk off. Who cares? I don't care about the first the, the, the royal family. I don't care about any of this nonsense. Yeah. Who cares? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Well, listen, we knew they were a bunch of entitled pieces of shit. Well, that's true, but maybe not this this uh, this Harry and 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 Megan. Maybe they're decent people. Oh, they sound like they're decent people. Yeah, they sound like they cared more about their sanity and their family than they did about uh, about being a member of the royal family. Plus, he was never going to be king anyway, so he had right. no, he had no, no investment in any of this. You know, well, they call they call one of them the the heir, and the other one is the spare. The spare, yeah, yeah. yeah. But Oof. if if that's a good life, but let's say William dies. Let's just say he dies. Harry doesn't become uh, uh, president. I was going to no, say kid. king. Yeah, his kid. His kid does so. So Harry had nothing to lose by leaving, except that he lost his uh, uh, protection, and he lost. Uh, you know, he lost probably his salary. Yeah. 
I don't think he really cares about that because he can he can support himself in other ways, being part of that uh, yeah. royal family background. Yeah. Hey, listen, we've run out of time. We've talked about farting. Yeah. And we talked about what else? We talked about we talked about COVID. We talked about Meghan and Harry. We talked mm-hmm. about uh, important about your cat. Yeah. You know. And I still think if you look behind it in the building behind you, there's a guy that's trying to jump from the window. Right you there. Watch. Right there. You see him? Yes. Right yeah, there. Right there. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> jump. Jump. Uh, you know, I, I, I love this green screen. It's the one thing I bought that I have a good time with. You Is know? it a big screen behind you? Oh, yeah. It's big. Yeah. It's big. And it comes down easy, too. Let me show you what happens. Oh, yeah. Look at this. Watch this, folks. Watch I was thinking this. of getting one. Watch, but uh, Watch this. I just pull, push down on the top, uh, and then this comes down. Oh, See? See? I like that. See? Then I just pull it right back up. So cool? you're just at the point of life where you're just throwing money away. It doesn't yeah, matter. Yeah, right. Let me get this. Toys. It's all about toys. Right. All 150 bucks of it. Yeah. Yeah. Hey. Oh, is that how much it costs? Yeah. I got to get, yeah. get one. We got to do this more often. I really enjoy this. You know? All you have to do is send that one word text to me. When? When. And, okay, and I we'll, will do we'll that. We'll get it going. Ladies and gentlemen, stick around. Uh, the, ladies and gentlemen, that's, that's my former producer and emotionally my producer for life, uh, Albert Ooh, Reynoso. Thank tough. you. Thank you, Albert. Thank you for having me. This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its seventh year. Talk like you've never heard it before. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, that's, uh, of course, uh, uh, Albert Reynoso. It's an old interview that we ran a while back. Uh, and I thought we'd run it again tonight because I'm lazy. I'm lazy. So's the audience. I've only got one person waiting to come on here and uh fortunately at least it's a guy who very seldom uh comes on our show so there he is ladies and gentlemen scott boddicker hello scott how are you thanks what's you, going on yeah, it's just you where is everybody i don't know i wasn't going to talk to anybody i, I don't know Where's you know here? when you call you just sit there and don't say much of anything i just listen and i just tonight, like to listen to tonight everybody. if you don't say anything we got trouble. Got trouble? Yeah, well, I mean, we haven't got anybody calling. Oh, okay. Well. Why, can you tell me, why do I keep doing this? Doing what? <laughs> this. You oh, know? the show. Yeah. Why the do show I, in general. Why do I keep doing it? People people don't call? Why am I doing it? It's, like, it's in your blood, man. You can't get it out of your blood. It's like if a tree falls in the forest and there's nobody there to hear it, is there a sound? <laughs> You know, uh, it, 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 it technically it that old conundrum. Oh, oh I don't, hmm? you know, I, I, I don't think there is because nor, well, no, there probably is. I'd have to look it up. I'd have yeah. to research it. Yeah. There's, uh, oh, oh okay. and here comes, Char- yeah. okay, here comes Char- oh. Charlie Wallace too. Well, mm-hmm. it's starting to fill up a little bit. All right. I, I, I was getting panicky there. One time we did a show, just you and me, and it was really stressful for me. Yeah. <laughs> like oh, four or five years ago. Hold on a second. Jeff, you got it was me. Oh, it was, was you? It was you? Yeah, I was in the waiting room. How, when did you kick me out? I didn't kick you out. <laughs> Somebody kicked me out. Oh, I was in oh, the waiting oh, room. Oh, earlier on. You know what yeah. happened? Here's what happened. See, I mean, this is, this is the, this is, wait, we just lost Jeff. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> See, we lose him while we're doing it. Uh, no, what happened was, is uh, I, I do a thing to try and clear out the system a little bit and, and get more memory in the cache. And I did it, and everything froze up, right? Uh-huh. Uh, and so I had to reboot uh, the, um, uh, the um, uh, what do you call it, the Zoom. Um, and also the thing that, you know, does the pictures and stuff here. Oh. So uh, I had to do that. And um, when I did that, you got kicked off. Okay. Please don't take it personally. <laughs> I take it personally. Yeah. So. I'm going to block my video for a few minutes because I'm eating an ice cream. <laughs> You're, you don't like me eating no, ice cream. I, 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 yeah, and, uh, and keep it blocked too, would you? <laughs> All he had to do was wait until you finished eating. Well, he was bitching that he had to talk to Scott only. 
<laughs> and, and, I and I understand hey, that. Uh, I wouldn't want to talk to Scott either. No, I, I, just, I like talking to Scott. I like Scott a lot. Oh, well, yeah. thank you. You know, but okay. Uh, so there's one person other than his, maybe his wife. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So anyway, I'm, I have angst tonight. Uh, we finally we got a uh, you know you've heard this trouble I've been having with the uh, with the getting a new refrigerator is yeah. because we couldn't get one that would fit in the elevator. So we yeah. found one that just fits by about a half an inch. Okay, we hope we hope. Um, and I, I imagine, and they have to take the doors off the refrigerator, but I hear that's no big deal. They, they're yeah. used to they're used to doing that to get something in into the house. What what happened to uh, Jeff again? What happened leaving. to Jeff again? We just keep losing him. He's in Florida. He's got the COVID. No, I, I don't. No. Oh yeah, he is in Florida, isn't His he? His computer has a virus. And we have Alan's blank because he doesn't want to be eating ice cream. He didn't have to eat ice cream. He could have just come on here or waited yeah. till he was finished with the ice cream to come on here. But anyway, so tomorrow it's supposed to come, and I'm worried. You know, I, I go through this angst about they won't be able to get it up here, but they're used to squeezing this stuff into tight elevators yes. and things like that. That's what they do for a living. But then we got to get the one we got here out, and my uh, my um, our uh, super said, well, you know, if need be, it'll just be in the uh, on the landing uh, for a week or so <laughs> until we can figure out how to chop the thing up and get it into an elevator. You know, still, still haven't figured out how they got it up there. Right? Well, it's oh. kind of like, uh, listen, I used to uh, know somebody. I uh, when I first came here, we first came here. This apartment, the person had a grand piano. Uh -huh. Now my question is, how do they get it here? Yeah. To begin with, I, sure they could have hauled it up over over the side of the building, but the windows aren't big enough to accommodate a grand piano. Right. What I figure they do is, I think grand pianos come apart. You can take the legs off, maybe. Take the legs off. You did, but did, but you know, I don't know. And but then you, you somehow get it. Else. But how they did it, I had no idea. When we were gone, when we took over the apartment, and they were gone. There, so was the piano. So, you know. But anyway, so I'm worried about that for tomorrow. We had to settle for a, a Whirlpool instead of a Samsung or an LG. Uh, and I would have liked the LG because they look cool. But you know what the hell? Is it got Wi-Fi in it? No. Oh. Well, I can't oh, figure man. out. Here, wait a minute. What do you mean, oh man? Hold on. <laughs> Everything's got Wi Fi in it. Why would you buy something that didn't have Wi Fi in it? Because, number one, I'm going to ask you the very important question What could a refrigerator possibly do with Wi Fi? <laughs> I don't know, but the one we had had Wi Fi. Yeah. The one my ex and I had. Yeah. We and, and what did you do with the Wi Fi? Nothing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> The Did only, it tell the, you that it was running and the temperature was such and such and such? Yeah, we give you all that information, but I didn't give a crap. I don't care. I put my head in there, and if it's cold, <laughs> it's cold. It's we lost Jeff again. <laughs> <laughs> what was that gal that was on Monday show? Uh, she kept coming on, and I, I thought it was the new Jeff. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, yeah, I'm trying to remember. Lenore, yeah. Len, L, LV something. Her yeah. last name was... Yeah. yeah, whatever. It doesn't matter. But but uh, anyway, so I have this whole angst. They're not going to be able to get it in. We're not going to be able to get one of the old one out. I'm sure it'd be fine. My my, uh, uh, they told me here. Let's go take a walk while they do this. Well, yeah. Well, also I got to get then I got to get our guy up to take the refrigerator out of the uh, because we had we had the refrigerator, um, we had him to pull it out, undo the you know the water because he, it has to be ready to go, all right? An ice maker for the ice maker, for the water in the door. Yeah, what? yeah, yeah. So he he undid all that. And mm -hmm. then we put the refrigerator on the other side of the room so that when the new one gets installed, we can simply take the stuff out of one and put it into another. Because if we don't do that, the food's going to go bad. So, you know. So I, I'm going to... See, I... Um, who was the guy that did the, the show Swimming to Cambodia? I'm trying to remember his name now. 
Oh, J Jacobson. Uh, uh, yeah, I, 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 I seem to. Uh, I'll remember the name shortly. Jorgensen. Uh, 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 yeah, something like that. Yeah. yeah. It, it popped up and said, uh, "People you may know on my Facebook." <laughs> oh, oh, just just type in uh, "swimming to Cambodia." See what comes up. Anyway, uh, and uh, give me his initials, and I'll immediately be able to tell you his name. But anyway, uh, I I said to him that when I whenever I was He's ready to go on a on a vacation, I would get all upset and everything, in trying to figure out what I was going to do. You know, if I was going to be able to make this train, to make this train, to make that train, I had to go from Paris to Bath to Bath to Bath. Will I make the train on time? And I was, I had always had this angst. And he said, "So do I." Happens all the time. And I went, "Well, I wonder why I do that." And he says, "I know why I do it." He says, "The same reason you do it. You're a control freak." What you want to do is you want to plan on everything that could go possibly go wrong. Wrong, right. Okay. And then when it doesn't, if it does, there are no surprises. And if it doesn't, everything's fine. But Roche, and so, Roche so the on. drug company, came yeah. out with a pill to solve that problem. It's called Valium. It's called Valium. Yeah. Well, anyway, it, that doesn't solve it for me. Okay. okay. So anyway, so so that's what I'm doing now is I'm looking for everything that could possibly go wrong. I've got a tape measure out. I'm measuring all the doors. Hey, this door is too big for it to get through. And and Marjorie just says, "Don't worry, our 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 fix-up guy, our super, he will know how to get that out of here." Okay. And he so anyway, it's you know because we we don't hire them to take it away. Uh, because we can pay thirty bucks and then we get a hallway service, and that's why don't you fun. do that? It seems like less of a hassle. You know why I don't do it? Because no. our uh, super wants the refrigerator. And what's going to happen in a week when he says, "I don't know how to get it out of here"? Well, he said, "If worse comes to worse, he'll chop it in half." You know, but okay. it, and I'm sure he has the equipment downstairs to do it with. But what he said was, is that. Uh, um, he, he wants, he was saying, oh no, I'll, I'll take it off your hands. Well, the reason he takes it off our hands is he turns around and he sells it to a, a, a junk dealer who gives him a few yeah. bucks for it. And my feeling is for all the nice things he does for us, uh, it's great, you know? And uh, I, I don't mind if he makes the money. So rather than have somebody else haul it away and have them scrap it, you know, uh, in fact, probably PC Richards makes a few bucks. All right. Yeah, they probably do. Yeah. I'd rather he get it. So that's sure. why I save it for him. And, and so, the, it, so why are you buying a new fridge? Is this one just old or just not working right? Or try, uh, ice makers busted? What? Try 18 years. Yeah. It's mine's, old. mine's about 18 now. Yeah. That well, mine's this 20 thing, years old. It runs fine. The, yeah. uh, the, um, uh, the gasket around the door is going and the door is lost a little thing so the door doesn't stay open now and uh, 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 the ice maker went okay yeah. and I tried to fix the ice maker and I got it working for a short time and then it stopped because I think yeah. the pump went bad okay my, my, my ice maker it, it just it leaks so you, it makes ice, but then it like leaks out of one side of it and it makes these blocks of ice in the tray. It's really <laughs> annoying. So anyway, but I just busted it up with a hammer and I got ice. So and Marjorie decided we got a new stove. Let's get a new refrigerator. Yeah. You know. What, uh, what what brand ice maker do you have there, uh, uh, Scott? What do you mean? What brand ice maker? He doesn't have an ice maker. Is a refrigerator? Oh, it's, 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 a, it's a Kenmore. It's a oh. Kenmore fridge. Yeah, oh. and this is the one we got as so, a one we got as a whirlpool. Yeah, the two. Well, same thing. So the the. What do you mean, same thing? It is. It's Kenmore. One starts with a W builds. and one starts with a K. What do you mean, right, the same whirlpool thing? Whirlpool builds Kenmore. Yeah, I think so. Oh, really? Whirlpool builds about every refrigerator in the world now. Absolutely. So LGs and. Samsung. Oh, really? Yeah. I didn't know oh, that. Yeah. U.S. wise, yeah, I think so. Yeah. In the United they States, they own just about every brand name now. I, they bought the Amana factory in Iowa, even, and changed. Yeah, 
I you think know, they still make a man out of your refrigerator. If you're, le- but... if you're leaking at one end, it, it, try leveling it. Maybe it, the level is off. No, nah, it's it's it's. <laughs> I think it's just cracked. I can't I can't stick my head in there. Oh, I, when I was getting really two screws and it uh, comes well, out. Come well, on. what I did is I actually got a whole new ice maker and put it in. Yeah, uh, which I, I thought very, about it. I but... was very proud of myself. It's really a pretty easy thing to do. Yeah, and, I've done it before on an, another fridge. Yeah, and and for a while it was working. It was making me tons of ice. I was saying to Marjorie, "Look, ice, tons of ice," you know. And then one day it stopped making the ice. The water wasn't coming through. And I assume what happened is the pu- the pump is at the bottom, and then um, it pushes it up through this thing. Anyway, um, uh, I, I because when he pulled it out today, there was water in the pipe. So it meant that there was water coming through, but it wasn't going, it wasn't circulating, it was, the pump wasn't circulating or something. Anyway, it's, it's old, okay? There's no pump. And I don't think there is a pump in there, Alex. No, so, so Alex, it's the water comes in a quarter inch into a, into a solenoid operated device. The ice maker says it's empty, sends electricity to the solenoid, it opens up, runs the water up the back of okay, the refrigerator. Okay, so the solenoid the probably is gone. Okay. Yes. Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, all right. Yes. A Whatever. I, I said pump because what do I know? I'm a Jew. Okay. <laughs> I'm a Jew and I know how to fix it. <laughs> well, well, yeah. it's, it's not a car. They don't have water pumps. Well, yeah. anyway, right. well, listen, you know, my father once replaced an entire toilet and then he invited everybody over to see it. <laughs> to, to use it yes. yeah you know you know look at oh, what i did because when you're a jew and you accomplish something like that it's a big deal you that, know what I'm that's actually very very easy to do but yes i refuse to do it because it stinks yeah uh anyway so when i did the ice thing i was so proud of myself yeah you know i mean a gentile wouldn't be proud they just say hey i did it I'm a man I'm, hey, you know but jews very proud when they accomplish anything like that. I was I was proud that my my daughter replaced her toilet, so that's pretty damn good. I thought. You oh, called really? the plumber, or she actually did? No, I she actually uh, took it off and reseated it with a new yeah. ring and everything. Wow, with a new wax ring without your help, and it worked. Oh yeah, not not at all. And her boyfriend is useless. I mean, oh, well, there you go. Yeah, no, she she's pretty handy. I her, guess her boyfriend is useless. Well, he must be good for something. <laughs> I see. Do you like the boyfriend? I like him very much. Oh, yes, okay. All right. So he I, is good I, for something. I, I call him my future son-in-law, but yeah. not to his face. Yeah, but I mean, you, ha- you have to like him because if your daughter loves him or is crazy about him, you, you don't want to piss off your daughter. No? Oh, no, 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 no. Yeah, that, that's not, not a Did fact. Did they ever bring somebody home you hated? I've been lucky so far. Oh, really? I mean, I'm two, two for, two out of three. The the third one, she's never brought a boy by, so I'm a little. <laughs> that's fine too. I I yeah. got no problem with that. You know, it's, it's life's life's little joys. <laughs> what I did once, I was I was I had this woman I knew. We were just friends, you know, and we're driving down the highway. This is in, I think, in New York years ago. And uh, she says to me, I have something to tell you. I said, what? She says, I'm a lesbian. And at the top of my voice, I look over and go, you're a dyke? (laughs) 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 Yeah. Yeah. Which reminds me of another funny story. My mother was visiting me. Now, the worst thing, how many here have ever had a mother come and visit them? I live with them my whole life. So I, <laughs> Tony. I got you talked. My mother comes and visits to use the bathroom on her way from point A to point B. I like the mother story. Tell her the mother story. Actually, what happened this time? Oh, no, my, mo- so my mother came to visit. And, yeah, in New York, and, right? And that meant to me that I wasn't going to get laid for about three weeks. You yep. know, because I, you know, I don't want to do that to mom. Mm-hmm. And then I finally decided, well, the hell with it. You know, mm-hmm. I mean, I, 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 uh, I, uh, uh, I have to go on living my life, even though she's here. 
So she was like 40 years old or something. How old were you? No, I was, I was, I was, I I think I was 50 at the time, something like that. Not that long ago. Yeah. Well, maybe I wasn't 50. I was in my 40s. Excuse me. Early 40s. Early 40s. Okay. So anyway, uh, I, so I, I bring over this series of women and they come and stay the night, you know, and, and finally at the end of her stay there, she says, you know what you've become? I said, what? She says a roué. A roué. Now that was a '30s term meaning. What does that mean? Like a swinger? A, a man of the boulevard. Like <laughs> <laughs> prestigious? Is that good or bad? A man of good. the boulevard. And uh, I said, well, <laughs> she funny. says, you know, she says, uh, this is not the son I raised, where you have this many girlfriends. <laughs> you know. You got worried. Oh, and she was I, insulted. And, and I said, "Well, Mom, uh, do you have any of them that you, you particularly uh, don't like?" And she says, "I don't like that Barbara." Oh. I and I said, that. "Okay, but is there one that you do like?" And she says, "I really like that Rhoda. She's very nice." <laughs> I said, "Okay, do you know what Barbara does for a living?" She says, "No." I said, she's a graphic artist and does book covers for for novels. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. And she was also, she's also married. uh, She's also the the niece of the couple who wrote The Way We Were, Alan and Marilyn Bergman. Oh, I like that movie. I I cry at the end. I said, so, yeah. So she, that has nothing to do with this story. I know. It's a good (laughs) ending. I'm a novel. I had a kid. I know. It's such a so anyway, moment. so and I said, uh, so she has a very good background. Uh, oh, okay. I said, do you know what Rhoda does for a living? She says, no. She's a porn actress. What is she like? <laughs> oh my god! I said, you really got taste, mom. You really know how to. Put, you really how to She's pick up. And, and I, no, I think right. I had to stick a put a stick in her mouth to keep her from swallowing her tongue. I mean, you know. I said, yeah, she, she has sex on film for, for money. And mom oh left the next day, I think. <laughs> and I never saw her again. No. Oh, no. But I love that. She was such a great judge of people. I mean, by the way, Rhoda was a terrific person. You know, so what if she was yeah. a porn star? Oh, she's probably very nice. Yeah, and, very and, friendly. And so, 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 she was honest with her. She told her what she did. So, so was she could have said she was an actress or something. Yeah, so it so was yeah, she's in broad Broadway. Yeah. Um <laughs> yeah, in a live sex show she's on Broadway. <laughs> you know. Make a lot but of but uh, uh, but Barbara, you know, very, very good uh, upbringing. you know. I went over to her house one day. She was she had to what'd she have? She had something really wrong with her and she had to be Bit kind of bedridden for a month, so I went out to Long Island to see her, mm-hmm. and uh, she's uh, saying she says to me, she says, "Yeah, I have nothing to do here, so I've been going through love letters from my father to my mother." Oh, oh. And she said, "Look what I found," and I found this love letter, and it was the letter he wrote to her asking her if she would marry him, and it said. What are you doing the rest of your life? She says, my aunt and uncle saw that letter and stole it. Because there was a song. What are you doing the rest yeah. of your life? Oh, yeah. 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 So, I, uh, and, it's a good line. Yeah. And then in a moment of great class, I said, well, I have to go. And she says, well, make sure you have the maid let you out. Well, I'm a fancy guy. Oh I don't let, I don't let I don't let maids let me out. I'm not, you know. I mean, come on. I don't want to feel have somebody feel subservient yeah, I mean. to me. I'm a hippie with hair down to here, and I, you know, I'm not. And so I open up the door, and every alarm in the neighborhood goes off. <laughs> and, the and within <laughs> two seconds, the cops are there. Really? Oh, my. <laughs> what do you live? You don't live around here. Yeah. <laughs> I, I said, wait well, I should have asked her to open the door for me, you know, because she knew where the alarm was. Ah, uh, some tales from my life. You what ready is... for some more coffee, Tony? Did you finish? Actually, I have my pot up? downstairs. I have to run downstairs for it. I oh, it don't do it. I was it. watching the cartoons. What, what is your T-shirt to say today? Uh, it? IT. I'm just in it for the cash. Oh, I like that. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. God, you are just terrific with the t-shirts. 
This actually came during the uh, pop up on Monday. You're better than Sheldon on Big Bang Theory when it comes <laughs> to t shirts. He has to have a long sleeve t shirt on underneath, though, to be Sheldon. Oh, yeah, right, right, right. And it's usually the Flash. He loved the Flash. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's true. Yeah. But uh, anyway, so what was happening? What's in the news? Oh, yeah, there, Trump has to turn over his, uh, his uh, yeah. private papers or whatever. Yeah. January 6th papers. January that the archive, 6th. he doesn't even have them. I'm a, he can't stop it, I don't think. Well, no, he can't stop it, but, I mean, he, could, he tried to stop them from being oh, released yeah. the yeah. committee. He tried to stop it with the... Several court. times. Well, I think as a president, you can say, okay, well, this is going to the National Archives like it has to, but they can't let it out to anybody for like a hundred years or something, you know. Unless you say, go ahead, I don't mind. You know, I'm sure Obama says anything you want to read, go in and read it, you know. Usually they wind up putting those papers in a library of their own, you know, so. But anyway, now they're asking his daughter to testify. So it's, it, it's uh, you know, it's not making them too happy. Good. Lock them all up. Huh? Lock them all up. You know, if we were going to lock them up, we'd already be starting the trial by now. I don't think anything's going to happen. It ain't going to happen. It's not going to happen. <laughs> you know, we yeah. just saber rattle and, you know, we didn't like him and, you know, oh, he, we should be, we're still investigating him. You just wait till we get stuff on him. And then we never do. You right. know? Right. Right. No balls. It's a waste of time. Yep. And, uh, so I mean, it's like the Mueller report all over again, you know, nothing. Yeah. 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 Um, uh, the Mueller report was which one? I, I keep forgetting one from another. It was, was that, was that Clinton? Uh, no, no, no. no. That was Trump, Trump, uh, Trump and the, oh, uh, oh, oh, Trump. Of course it was Trump. And, yeah. And the, in the Ukraine or whatever, not Ukraine, but yeah, Ukraine. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. And, and uh, threatening the uh, and the Mueller report didn't uh, prove anything. Whoops! I have to uh, take the, uh, take that out of the picture. Um, yeah, yeah, you know. This, well, it proved there were at least ten cases of where he obstructed justice. And yeah, yeah, yeah. But nobody's acting on it though. Can't do it to a sitting president, and you apparently can't do it to a non-sitting former president. Yeah. Well, you can what you can get him on. You can't. You're going to be rather hard pressed to get him on something he did while he was in office, unless it's a real malfeasance of office, like you know he was making money off of people going to the men's room at the White House or something. That'd be good. Well, I'm sure he was. <laughs> I'm sure yeah, he I'm was. sure he was too. He's making money off of people going overseas and visiting all his resorts and stuff. Yeah, yeah. but anyway, the point is that uh, that. Uh, uh, but uh, uh, the civil stuff, on the other hand, is a different story altogether. Because that, a sitting president can even be held responsible for that, I believe. Because it's uh, nothing that happened while he's in office. What? What are you going to say, Scott? I was going to say, well, they did get uh, Clinton to testify on that one sexual harassment case he had. From Arkansas, yeah, the while Paul, he was the president, Paul, the Paul but Jones. he was he was a sitting president, but he didn't. I believe he did it when he was the governor. I think. Yeah. Uh, yes, yes, you're right, you're right, mm -hmm. and I think he could be held to account for that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I wonder, can you be if you're president and you hit on somebody in your office, can you be charged with something even though you're the president? Sexual harassment. Yeah. Uh, ask Cuomo. I don't know. He might know. Oh, Cuomo's a yeah. good... Well, yeah, but the, he's not a president. Well, he's close in the same field. If the president's Democrat, I'm sure the Republicans say, yeah, he could be Yeah, he could be uh, charged with something. Yeah, well, Cuomo's... Only Republicans that can't be charged with something. God, I wish Cuomo were back in office. Boy, we could sure use him now. It's sad. But anyway... And let's see, what else did I see was happening in the news? Let's see, a reporter down in South Carolina, was it? Got hit by a car while she was doing a stand-up report. Did you see that? Ooh. Oh, I didn't see that. Ooh. Oh. Did you see it, Scott? No, oh, no. Oh. It sounds painful. Just go online. It's It's oh. got to be there. Is she dead? Did she oh, survive? Oh, no, no. She got hit by the car, knocked to the ground, 
got right back up and finished her, her report. <laughs> That's a Ooh. pro. Yeah. And they, everybody's saying the business, what a pro, you know, she didn't wow. give up. So hmm. pretty cool. That pretty cool. Uh, let me see here. That was news. What else was news? Um, hmm. I, you know, I, 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 you know, I have this great fear of death and things like that. And I've been mulling a lot of things over about life and, you know, where we go after death. Mm -hmm. And I'm beginning to think that there is no world before I was born and there's no world after I'm gone. That whatever time we live in, in is a time frame that we, you know, you get what I'm trying to say here? You know, that it's all an illusion, but yeah. it exists for the time we're here. Wow. Isn't that profound? Yeah. yeah. The fact that I'm dreaming about you saying that is really profound. Why me saying that? <laughs> because... Because I thought you were a moron? What? No, you, know, you, you said that, that this was all a, a, a dream to you. It was all, you know, something that you made up or whatever. And I was saying, well, sure. Well, I mean, it just, when I look back on it, it's like some kind of ongoing dream, you know? Yeah. It, it's like a world that probably pops up as I think about it. You know, the the world only exists when you are alive. That's right. Yeah. That's right. After I'm gone, the world yeah. no longer exists. Right. So I'm not going to miss anything. That's right. Yeah. Uh, we'll but, miss you though. No, oh, well, I'm, I'm sure you will, and uh, you can. Mm -hmm. I'm sure if I keep doing this show long enough, you one day you'll come on here and it'll be like, well, we won't even have a show. There'd be no show. Mm -hmm. In fact, there'd be no world. You just all disappear. All of you. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. We'll all be gone. I said something profound the other day. I said something profound the other day to Will Durst on the phone. And I said to Will that I, uh, uh, I said, he said, how have you been lately? And I said, you know, every bone in my body aches. You know, I've got neuropathy. I've got uh, the results of whatever we did to my prostate, you know. I said, it, it's all, it, as you get older, you just got all these little aches and pains. I said, but you know something? What it becomes is the mm. new normal. It becomes, mm. you have to accept it as normalcy. That You can't regret it because you can't run like you used to <clears throat> or screw like you used to or whatever, mm. you know. And I said, the same thing probably is true of you. You may never get the use of your leg back again. So you just adjust to that. That's the new reality, and you get on with your life. And I thought that was very profound of me. Yeah, you know, I'm going to say, I, I, shut I'm going to ask Shut up, too. Tony. What? No, oh. <laughs> no, you know why? Because when I, I'm not trying to make it about me, but that's something what you said kind of made me think about what I was thinking about when I was in the doctor. Did you think about like, what you were thinking about? I you mean, like you maybe it came to my mind that when I was in the doctor's office, I was getting, you know, I get nervous with doctors I always did. But then I say to myself, I was accepting like when you're in the room waiting, like I'm getting old. It's like, I kind of got depressed about it. I'll tell you the How truth. old are you, Tony? I'll be 53 this year. Fuck you. Yeah, really. <laughs> no, but I mean, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm saying you and get a big, worried, like, what's going to be? fuck you from Charlie and a big fuck you <laughs> from Jeff. And, but uh, I, I think Scott it's like, you know, the three. Hmm? Yeah, but I, I don't know. I mean, I, I always felt like it was an old soul. But I mean, as you get older, it's like, I'm not 23 anymore. Like, I can't. No, you're 53. I know. Like, I used That's to go profound. to, like. Profound. That's profound. I know. Don't I mean, look a day after old, older than 60, so you're okay. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. But I mean, it's, it, you're right. Though. I don't know. It sucks getting old. Do we, no, I, I don't know. No, it's I, like I, you I, get, I'm saying it sucks know. getting old. But and, and Jeff will probably agree with me on this, too. But that what you should do is really just accept that. This That's is, what I had a hard time doing, this, accepting. This, you know what it is? Everybody. Will you is, let is, me is, finish my thought, Tony? <laughs> oh, sorry. Man. Oh, God. <laughs> Use those. That coffee is a suppository. <laughs> OK, I had a cup before coming in. <laughs> Jesus. Have you ever heard of coffee enemas? They're very good. Mm -hmm. I, 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 this is what it looks like. <laughs> really? You know. Tony Magno, the coffee enema expert. That's my vice. Yeah. But, but um, anyway. My name on it. 
Yeah. I hear it's a good laxative too. By the way, uh, are you uh, uh, Brian? Are you still eating the uh, the keto bars? Oh, you know, yeah. Uh, I just had one tonight. Yeah, we just we went to Costco on the weekend, and I got a box. And actually, uh, Simon got a box too. Well, you see, the reason we're keeping the refrigerator there is I don't want my keto bars to melt. So yes. we have to get yes. from one refrigerator to another. Like yeah. Simon's not really fat. What does he need mm. keto bars for? He's so skinny. And then he shows me his report card with an A in weightlifting. And I said, that's an A for weightlifting? You got to <laughs> That's our joke here. What do you get? How do you get an A in weightlifting? Participation. Yeah. Ooh, that's it, right? <laughs> yeah, I guess I guess. Because I remember when I went to college, you had to take a sport. Yeah. Right. And um, I, as you know me, I'm not really Mr. athletic. A, nobody ever <laughs> called me Sporty Spice. You know, I mean, come on, I'm not sporty. <laughs> So what did I take? What anybody want to guess what I took oh, for guess. my sport? Huh? No. So, uh, I was going to say what I took. Tennis. No. 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 That oh, took, wait a minute. That I takes too bowling. much exercise. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Bad bingo. Man. Bingo. Boddicker took bowling. 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 Oh, I like bowling. Yeah. And I took bowling. I took bowling. Yeah. You know why? Because they said all you have to do is is uh, do Play like thirty frames a se in a season and you get an A. Yeah. So I went and did wow. thirty frames. I didn't mind bowling. Yeah. You know, because <laughs> I didn't consider it any kind of exercise. I considered it a skill. Yeah. Once we could drink beer while we did it. You yeah. Know? <laughs> but I mean, I could do gutter balls for you know. <laughs> And I had to do like two sets a day or whatever. What do they call them? Uh, Fra uh, frames. Uh, two, games? two frames. frames? Two games. frames of oh. sitting. And I had to do like 30 frames in the whole seat. That was it. And so I, you didn't have to get good at it, though. I didn't know. You, you didn't have, have to learn how to keep score. You had to learn how to keep score, right? Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. Right. right. Which I That's don't the tough part in bowling. Which I don't remember now. Yeah. Because the top score you can get is a perfect 300. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. Twelve strikes. Twelve. Twelve strikes. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah. And 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 everything. nobody's ever gotten. Hmm? Oh, lots of people. Oh, right. lots of people. Oh, yeah. Okay. Really? How high? Oh, you, yeah. What's the highest you think I ever bowled? Anybody? Mm -hmm. um, what's the highest? One hundred five. One hundred five. One hundred five. Cocaine and weed. Is that the highest? I think. I think I remember me doing two hundred and seventy. Wow. Whoa! Two seventy? Wow! Yeah. That's pretty damn good. What'd yeah. you have? Somebody help you? A lot of beers. <laughs> I that's no, like ten I, strikes in a row. I just have people not watching. Uh, <laughs> I got ten strikes in a row once. Did yeah. you? Yeah. Oh, I mean, one time. I mean, the rest oh. of the time, I did. I was in the high mid mid hundreds. You know, 150, 170, something like. I've done three strikes in a row at the end, right? That's a turkey. Yeah. Three strikes in a row. Yeah. In a row a turkey. I, I don't know what 10 in a row is. It's like a longhorn. I don't know. I don't think they ever gave it a name. Yeah. But I don't, I, I don't think many people have done 300 in history, have they? Oh, oh yeah. heck. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. People that have bowled them on TV <clears throat> during, during uh, the matches on TV. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I mean, Little girl, I mean, girls have yeah, yeah. Women can even get 300. Yeah. If somebody that? that's non pro, <laughs> like Alex, could do 270. Other people should be able to, pros should be able to do 300. Well, no, but I mean, I, I, I did 270 as a fluke. You know, yeah. I just went, what did I just do? Oh, yeah. Mm. Did I do 270? I think you're so. really thinking of 170. No. No, no, yeah. no, no. It was in the twos. That I yeah. do remember. Yeah. 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 All he has to do is you know get lucky and you, and you hit a not bunch of strikes in a row. But that's what yeah, I how you think, it. Jeff. But that's what I took in uh, in. Yeah, in I, it's amazing. What? <laughs> What's amazing? <laughs> the numbers that you're talking about; those are incredibly high. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I mentioned it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's not golf. It's bowling, Jeff. Well, I understand what it is. I but was very good at miniature golf, too. Yeah. In fact, there was a point in my life where I got obsessed with miniature golf. Boy, some windmills really had to take my wrath. Wow. Well. You know? <laughs> 
But no, what happened is, is if on any miniature golf course, if you know the course, if somebody tells you the course, mm. you can do incredibly well. Oh, because yeah. Because you know you hit that specific point there, and the ball will go over to this point here, and then it will yeah. go through the windmill or mm -hmm. whatever. <laughs> and, and so once you played a miniature golf course any number of times, you pretty well got it figured out. Yeah. And you got to go to another one so that at least yeah. it can be interesting. Yeah. I've been to two miniature golf courses, and both of them I broke car windows. Mm. <laughs> really? Nice. Good. I gave up miniature golf. Oh, no, that's 10 points right there. Oh, is it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, uh, I was a long ways from the, you know, you got this fit, but never mind. Yeah. So it, we, the, the parking lot was a distance away. So anyway, you're, only supposed, you're only supposed to putt yeah. like 10 feet in miniature golf. Brian, we haven't seen much of Adrian lately. Is she uh, like... Uh... She's, yeah, she's... Well, our house is like... <laughs> we're doing all this construction everywhere. So, And then Tiffany's been staying home this week. Uh, COVID's going through their department, so she's working from home this week. So my office, my, my nice office, is a ruins because of her. Really? She has... <laughs> <laughs> Extra keyboards everywhere, mouse. The wedding, the wedding is <laughs> off. That's right. And then she leaves her food everywhere. Oh, oh. no. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I was going to say, somebody's going to be sleeping on the couch. You're there. supposed to be sleeping in here. Oh, and then because my chair, she put her chair in here. Oh, my God. Oh. <laughs> And a house is like they just tore up our stairs, and now they tore up all down here. They put the new doors in, and oh my god! So our house is like I can't wait. I, I know people hate renovations in their house, and now I know why. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Other than that, everything else is good. But and now you're gonna. You, the minute you decide to marry this woman, uh, you start complaining about her. Is that what this is yeah, all really. about? <laughs> <laughs> and then you know what? No. <laughs> so the latest thing that we have going here as our running gag in the house is I said to Marjorie she always whenever she would fart she would spray God and, doesn't and, that make a mess <laughs> oh. ah, her pants she's not in heat okay <laughs> uh, anyway oh, I wasn't talking about that type of spray uh, uh, anyway anyway so I finally said to her, you don't have to spray anymore because that orange spray is just, it's more disgusting than the fart itself. <laughs> fart and it, orange it, spray it, comes it, Well, it, it, you, get, you get orange mixed with fart. That's really what uh, happens. Anyway, anyway, I said, you don't have to. And I said, the reason you don't have to is orange. I love you so much that I think of your gas as ambrosia. <laughs> I said, that's how much I love you. You don't have to spray any longer. And by the way, I will spray because, again, I love you. <laughs> okay? So now every time she farts, I put my head, I turn my head away, put my hand over my face and go, I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you. Oh, God. She has, she has her, all her... <laughs> Paperwork from work, yeah, everywhere. Oh, oh all over the place. Well, Marjorie, Marjorie works right over here. Uh, although it looks my li like my living room, it really isn't. It's this, anyway. Anyway, <laughs> uh, uh, but Marjorie has uh, over there, but she has, you know, it's her her place to have her office, except she starts using my chair over there to put all her papers on. So if I have to sit there and work on the the other computer, which uh, serves out the programs out to the uh, the rest of the world, uh, uh, I have to uh, uh, sit on her work. It's horrible. It's terrible. Does it smell like your farts? Or no, what? no, no, no. <laughs> that that is her. That's her desk over there that I've had there for like a year, and she's never used it till now. And then she likes my whole setup. So then she worked here one day, and then everything was here. Now, do you have two monitors? No, no, because she has her laptop, and she never works from home. And now, all the, because of the 
you know, I think spreading around our company right now. So, mm -hmm. so she's working up from home this week, and yeah, it's just. A mess. In this room, I have one, two, three, four, five monitors, and then I have two monitors in the other room. Yeah, I got to get her monitor and yeah. get her stuff over there. Yeah, but it's it's you know, it's pretty been pretty pretty good. But anyway, so well, she's been working a lot from home while COVID's been going on. Now she's starting to go back. She was thinking of going back. She was going to go back today, and then it started snowing here, and she mm. went, screw that, you know. I'm, uh, mm. you know. Um, but let's say, I, I, the other problem I'm thinking about here for a second is, as you know, we went through this whole thing, rigmarole, with the apartment. So now my yes. lawyer says, we're going to sign the lease and we're gonna send them checks, okay? So I go, he says, so make up one check for the three months rent that you haven't paid so far because they, we, we made the deal saying would start at the beginning of November. And then also uh, send me uh, another separate check as, a, uh, as the deposit, okay? Which all of this is going to break me because three months for rent and deposit comes to two thousand dollars. <laughs> this is laughable. Did, didn't you pay a deposit when you first moved in? Here, yes. Yeah. He owes it back to us forty two hundred dollars. Oh, okay, got it. That should take care of. You think you'll ever see it? Well, no. It'll, that'll take care of. Uh, well, it'll take care of nine months rent. Anyway, uh, no, I'll see it. I'll see it. Because uh, we owe him seventy five thousand. Oh, okay. Okay, so we better get it. Otherwise, we're going to send him a check for less than seventy five thousand. But anyway, okay. here's the point. Here's the point. Seventy five thousand. So, so the, the, my lawyer goes. Oh, so okay. I have a I have a business manager. My business manager pays all my bills. When I have a rent check that has to go out, he cuts the rent check, and sends it by bank wire to wherever the organization is that gets my money for the rent. Been doing this forever. My lawyer wants me to write a check. He says, I have to have it in your name. I said, we don't do business that way. Nobody does anymore. You know, I mean, mm -hmm. uh, what, 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 you know, who, who writes checks anymore? Right. And I said, if you want me to write a check, Come to my house and find it because find them because I don't know where they are anymore, you know. And then when I write them out, you can't read anything I write because I can't write anymore. Yeah, I got checks. Yeah. Why do you, Why do you still have your business manager? Because I he was with me in the bad times and uh, I just continue to have him. And he was with me in the good times and the wealthy just, folks can afford. And he's a close that. personal friend. Who I don't mind handling my money, okay, you know, and he does my taxes every year on top of it, and, you know. So, um, uh, it's worth having. It's worth having. I find it, you know, especially when there's a problem. He's there taking care of it, like this thing. So we were going back and forth, with my lawyer, about, uh, you know, I don't, I can't write you a check. Gary has to send you, send one to you, in one way or another. And so Gary's trying to figure out how to keep him happy. Oh, it's just it was just a mess just to say, hey, we just want to write the checks and look, they shouldn't care who writes the check. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I, mean, get a check. I mean, I if I had a benefactor mm. or I had but, a Yeah. Hey, there she is. There she is. He was just asking about you. Yeah, I was asking how you were, Adrian. She has dance on Tuesday night. She had mm -hmm. it on Wednesday night. She had it tonight. She has it tomorrow night for rehearsal. Then Saturday, she has auditions yeah. for singing, for all this stuff. And yeah. then she has competitions on Saturday night. Mm -hmm. And then she has more auditions for Sunday morning for this other dance crew. So, yeah. She's a busy girl. Yeah. 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 Wow. She, she's uh, she's uh, getting to be a little adult. Well, not quite. You yeah, like the rolling eyes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Can I say something? Mm. Uh, when did you one. suddenly become shy, Adrian? Yeah, when are you shy, huh? When did you become? Yeah, you can go. No, can you? And I can color it. Okay. What did? What she say? 
She wants me to draw something and then she'll color it. No, I see. Okay, is your is your drawing getting better, too? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Because I've got, got the stuff that you know she did when she was oh. younger, and it was like stick figures, but everything was proportionate. Yeah. So I. Yeah. So Ryan's so, about ready to go offline when she unplugs the computer over there. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. She wants paper. Do you draw something for Alex? Hello. Uh -huh. How, how is she becoming as an artist? Good? Is she, she's, yeah. yeah she, oh, man. See this chair? The chair just fell down. Her chair is terrible. Yeah. Oh, I, um, I have a chair over here that I can't keep up. I'm, I'll sit there and okay. all of a sudden it'll go. Mm. Like just go down. Yeah. No, yeah. Her drawing is doing good. Yeah. And she does. Oh, babe, go get your drawing from. Oh, we threw it away. Now, she does drawing. So every Thursday she does sharing day and they have a letter. And then instead of presenting something, she what? draws it all the time. What? So, what? so you're drawing your LL doll yeah. drawing. Where is it? Okay, okay. Yeah, so she does these drawings, and if there's one that says "Wonderful Me" and the and all these stars, and then you're supposed to draw yourself. She draws herself with that with a crop top and her belly button showing. <laughs> <laughs> So because of her dancing, you, she loves can... crop tops, so she wears those all the time. She's so showing up. She has her in the crop top. <laughs> it's so funny. Well, what what does she want for her next birthday? A stripper pole? No, uh, <laughs> no. That's what Chris Rock says. Keep her away from the pole. It's my only job. <laughs> oh man, and you are very lucky, you know. Yeah. No, she's doing good, and then Stephanie's been doing drama classes right now, and she's has another play coming up and stuff like that. So yeah, so they're doing good. I, and I didn't ask you this: Have you been married before? Yeah, I was married and divorced. Yeah, married. Yeah. We we're together like twelve years. Oh, really? That long? But it was like my party time. I mean, yeah, we were a fun partying couple. Yeah. yeah. You, you, when marriage you, gets in your way. No, we had, partying. Did you have any kids by her? No, 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 no. Oh. Adrian's my one and only. Yeah. Oh, okay. That, that, so, yeah. so this has been a whole new experience for you. Yeah, you know? 48. I was 48 when I had her. So wow. When I had her, I mean when Tiffany had her. Okay, <laughs> I, I've asked this question before, and I always get the same answer. I want to see if I get it out of you. How did things change once you became a father? Uh, I went to less car shows at the beginning. <laughs> um. Yeah, but you know, so yeah, I mean, the car shows and all that stuff really yeah. slowed down a lot of my social life. Yeah. But I was just waiting for her to get old enough. And now she's old enough. And she's the one that whenever I start sneaking out in the morning to go somewhere, she's up and at him and like, what are you going? Where are you going? You know, so she always wants to go with me. So that's, I'm really happy about that. Yeah. Your well, son's not interested in the cars. He does not like attention at all. So whenever I get mad, I go pick him up from school in the McLaren. Because what I've always heard from people, <laughs> there's and I miss not my a lot of McLarens in in your neighborhood. I miss my opportunity because we dropped him off uh, on his first day of school, and all of the cheerleaders were lined up, and all the people were lined up with signs and "Oh, welcome back!" You know, after COVID stuff. And I was like, "You are so lucky! I didn't have the McLaren." <laughs> Well, here's yeah. the thing. Everybody who has ever had kids has told me that the day they had a kid, all of a sudden their whole perspective about life changed in that it was no longer about them. Yeah. All of a sudden you had this responsibility for another human being and all of a sudden your whole focus changes. Mm -hmm. You know? Is that is that true? Oh, I mean, yeah. Even we, Tiffany and I joke about it, but when her and I first started dating, uh, the, one of the first times we went and got Stephanie from school mm -hmm. and all of a sudden, and so she, we picked up Stephanie from school and they went in the back seat. And this is the first time I met Stephanie and Tiffany were in the back seat and I was taking them home. And I was like this, I was like driving so careful. Cause oh my God, I have a kid in my car. <laughs> it's like so bizarre. Yeah. And then you're yeah. like, so driving so careful. And now, you know, 90 miles an hour. Well, in the, your, them your, response, <laughs> your responsibility changes. Oh yeah, you know, yeah. You're yeah. no and, longer and every second of the day. You know, she needs somebody there. For yeah, her. that's terrific. That's so, how terrific. many other kids in your son's school show up in the McLaren? Zero, I bet. Zero. You. Yeah. 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 I don't even know what a McLaren looks like. Oh, he's nice. Yeah. Yeah, he's they're nice. On, on on Facebook. All over yeah. Facebook. Yeah, Doors. Yeah. 
doors go up. Yeah. Well, yeah. I don't go to Facebook pages because you know I can get uh, 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 infected from. Yeah. You know. <laughs> if, if, did you ever watch? Uh, was it Silicon Valley? Didn't they have that TV show on HBO? I think one of the, yeah, the guys guy had a McLaren. McLaren. Yeah. Yeah. McLaren. Yeah. Yeah. It was, yeah. The rich, the rich billionaire guy that kept. Didn't somebody take it out and total it or something? I, I hope not. Yeah. Well, I mean, you can total a car on TV, and it's all, you know, no. you're not really totaling it. You, they, they might. I don't know. Hobbs and uh, you know the the one of those Fast and Furious Hobbs and Cobb and Hobbs or whatever that one was. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, they have the McLaren at the beginning of the movie. They racing around in this. Well, how good. rare are McLarens? Oh, uh, they're around. They're yeah. Now you bought a used one, right? Yes. <laughs> yes. How much would a brand new McLaren cost? Million. Well, they're going like four hundred to yeah, the Senna's like one point two, one point yeah. And the speed sales like four million. They just sold one to Barry Jackson for three million. How yeah. old is yours? Two thousand thirteen. Wow. The perfect year. So it's gotta be worth something in that range, right? But every all the cars are going up in value or up in price right now. I think there's a lot of there's a lot of money now because of COVID. Yeah. So like Bear Jackson was going crazy that the prices they were getting, and I think you know you have all this money here, and now when you have COVID and all this other money comes into play, all these new people have money and they start buying stupid stuff. So. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean. I uh, guess that's like me. <laughs> <laughs> well, how long ago did you buy this? Oh, it was like what, like six months ago, I guess. Oh, yeah, okay. he, all over. You, you missed all of that when he was doing that. Oh, I don't know. I'm so welled up in my own stuff that I. Just yeah, the bigger thing is we're working <laughs> on the house, so my friend's a contractor, a really good contractor. So we started with the kitchen, and now it's been like every single room, is a room by room, and outside, and it's crazy. So, yeah. So wow. Half yeah. the stuff's torn up, and. Yeah. Yeah. And in the middle of it, all the prices went crazy with wood. Yeah, the uh, stuff, the get just to get the doors here. Oh, I know right. the price of wood has gone up because hookers charge more now. <laughs> See, the price of wood has gone up. <laughs> okay, well. It wasn't that funny, Charlie. <laughs> Charlie laughs at everything. He uh, laughs at Irv's jokes. What I do is I, <laughs> I, I, I don't play to the room. I play to Charlie. I told you, Bob Saget loved me. He, he loved me in the audience. <laughs> They're paying you to come to his shows. Oh, boy. So where are you? You're still in Florida, right, Jeff? I sure am. Yeah. Wow. It is the strangest world. Yeah. Where, where in Florida? Nobody. Too many, too many Jews for you? It's not even that. It's just... Nobody has a mask. Yeah. Oh, doesn't yeah. exist. Oh, yeah. Even the old people? Yep. Wow. Yeah. It's unbelievable. Yeah, in in Lodi, and Lodi is about two hours away from here in, in Center, California. The same thing. They have all the mask signs on the door say so have wear them and people aren't wearing them. It's so bizarre. And they wonder why the COVID rate is so high in the Central Valley. It's Biden's fault. <laughs> you know, you know, Scott, you gotta, you gotta come call the show more often because you're I've funny. I've enjoyed it. I, you're I, funny. I do need to. I do need to. Otherwise, I fall asleep and I miss Jack's show. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But what you can do is you can come on here, rehearse all the stuff you're gonna do on Jack's show. And before well, you it's hard to get Jack's a word show. in edgewise on Jack's show for some reason. I don't know why. Well, it's Jack. Huh? <laughs> Jack. Jack really likes to talk. He's listening right now. He's going to be I know. pissed. I, I know. know. He's going to be pissed. He's never going to talk to you again. Oh, wait a minute. He will talk to you again because he talks. Anyway. <laughs> hey, listen. Thank you wait, so no, much, Scott. Really, do it more often. I, you're really fun. Oh. Uh, uh, and uh, Charlie. Thank you so much, Alan. Thank you. Oh, look, what's she whispering? Oh, now, now if I pay attention to her, she's going to pretend like she's shy. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Brian, and whoever that broad is you have with you. Uh, yeah, Adrian. And, uh, uh, God, she's adorable. Uh, 
uh, uh, uh, uh, Jeff, thank you, and thank you uh, very much. Uh, glad to uh, talk to you, Tony. Uh, you, glad you drank coffee tonight. Hey, that's <laughs> it for tonight. Everybody, give a big wave goodbye. I'll give a big wave goodbye as well. And uh, we'll see you again, hopefully, tomorrow. Bye-bye. There they go, folks. That's our citizen panel. They're out of here. They're gone. And uh, we're gone, too. Uh, Jack Bishop is next with The Intersection on most of the same gab net. I will be back again tomorrow night. Uh, what time? Oh, yes, 10.30 Eastern Daylight Time. Or it's Eastern, it's Eastern Standard Time. Right? Eastern Time, okay? In the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? And by the way, yeah. Get vaccinated. And if you don't get vaccinated, wear a mask. See you tomorrow night, everybody. Bye.